Now, very first story, convener of the Fix the Country movement, the movement that brought Ibrahim Kaka's issue to the fore, has rejected the position by the Justice Kumsing led committee. The findings of the committee have distanced the death from a social activism. Oliver Bakavomo says the committee erred in this regard. He's been speaking on the AM show. I mean, it's, it's, it's training absurdity for them, and particularly when you have a justice of the, of the Court of Appeal sitting on a committee like this, to be doing a foray into matters as to who killed Kaka and the circumstances that led to Kaka's death. If you remember very well from the proceedings of the committee, the widow of Kaka had asked the committee clearly and on record whether the committee was looking into who killed Kaka and the circumstances related to his death. The committee was very clear that they had no mandate to look into the matter. And so to do this, when we know very well that somebody is in, or certain persons are in police custody, have been arraigned before court, have been remanded, and that there's an active murder investigation going on relating to the death of Kaka, one would think, even if you're not legally aware, that common sense would lead you into a direction whereby you would, you'd make the determination that all that is necessary for our determination here is today is why did the people of Ejura come out to protest? They themselves say in the report that the reason why the youth did that was because of the incompetences around the investigation into the attack on Kaka's life. Now, that is sufficient alone to come in out for people who said that the police are not doing enough regarding the reports that have been made to them on the death of a person of repeat in the community. You have no business, zero business, going into determining whether or not the widow of Kaka, by the fact that she did not report the, the, the threat on the husband's life, for which reason she's not uh, credible for some reason. How many of us have been in situation and refused to report those instances to the police? Just a couple of days ago, uh, Andrea Usu, who's a socialite known as uh, Efia Odo, has come out and said that the reason why she was not at the face the country demonstration was because she received threats on her life that people were going to pour acid on her, on her at the demonstration. She chose not to attend the demonstration, but did not go on to report to the police. For so many reasons, we all understand that every time we go to the police, that our... our experiences with the police do not put us in, the, in a situation where we are confident that they, one, they take anything you tell them seriously, or two, they send you off to go and investigate and find the, the house of a suspect and, and then pay their fuel and transportation for them to go and arrest the person. And so the determination whether or not you wanted to report a threat on a life to the police is not a basis for determining whether or not a threat is credible or not credible. Okay. But beyond that, they themselves have gone on and said the reasons why the persons came out is one, that the police failed to act properly. Two, they provoked the people by sending the military, the military van, the water cannon, to the cemetery where Kaka was being buried. They said that themselves. So I do not see what benefit it gives or what clarity it gives as to why the persons died and, and, and the violence that was unleashed on the community of Nigeria.